<clears throat> Hello, beautiful people. Okay, you know how I started this whole thing being all about the science. And I remember making that one video on my back deck where I was saying, look, y'all, stop giving me shit about original use. Like we look to the lore and the original use to know where to go with the science. Well, since then, it's been what, three years now, I've been playing with this thing, experimenting with original use. And just one by one, original use winds up showing promise that, that they knew what they were doing. And since this is one of the oldest medicine mushrooms that we know of, it has been used the longest. We suspect it's been around about 30 to 35,000 years. It, it would stand a reason that by now, traditional use would make a lot of sense. And so when the science backs up traditional use and what I've been experimenting with and going, y'all, it works, it really works. When the science starts to come out that I've been asking for, you have to know how excited I am. So when I got this article, the First thing I did was contact Jeffrey from Scythe Wellness and be like, oh my God, are you kidding me? Is there any way at all that we could talk to your science guy? And well, here's Brian, the science guy. Hi guys, thanks for meeting me today. Hey, Teresa, Hi, thanks for having us. I'm so excited to talk about this. So let's get some things cleared up for people so they understand what we're talking about. So this study is about inflammation. And I know that I'm always talking about anxiety with you guys, right? Mental health and stress and panic attacks. And, but that's not all that we've been talking about, right? I make my oil extract topically for inflammation. I told y'all about the oral surgery I had and the painkillers weren't touching it. And 20 minutes after using amnita orally, like the pain was in half and I, and I was sleeping. So we know that there's some role in inflammation here. And we've, we've been talking about that. So this study is on inflammation. So then the question becomes, well, did psyched wellness do the study? And then, oh, well, gee, look what we found, it works. We know that if that's what happened, we would have a little bit of difficulty in trusting them. So Brian, can you tell me who actually did this study? Uh, yes, um, so basically the study was done by the NRC, which is the, um, governing body of research in Canada that's very similar to the United States as NIH. Um, this is a pilot study that's involving uh, a group that is specializing in the area of immunology and inflammation. So did you ask them to do the study for you? Uh, yes, so basically this is a contract study. Um, they prepared with, uh, with the guidance of, of myself as one of the scientific advisors for psych and wellness. And that, that's how the study got started. And so there's no way that they, you could pay these guys off to get a positive result. No, not at all. No, no. <laughs> um, yeah, the, uh, no. So with, with regarding scientific research, um, of course, it can be a, a very positive result or it could, be, or it could be a negative result. And in this case, um, the data has shown initially right now that it's a positive result for us. And if it was a negative result, you wouldn't put out press releases. You just move on and say, oh, well, I guess we won't spend any more money on this, right? Well, that's correct. Um, so, you know, data can be positive or negative, still very informative. It just means that that particular hypothesis um, just was, didn't work. So we would have to relook at it again and see why it didn't work. Um, of course, there's many systems involved in, in the area of inflammation. Um, we chose one that is, uh, you know, is, is one that's a large group and it's involved in many things. And we thought would be one of the easier um, uh, methods to work with, with, uh, with the technology available. All right. And I'm going to ask you about that in just a second. So when we talk about we're testing the mushroom, Jeff, can you tell me what it is that you're using? Do you like throwing raw mushrooms at, at the <clears throat> dishes here and seeing what, what works? No. So, uh, you know, part of our early days of, of working with this mushroom was to create a, a proprietary extract. Um, obviously, uh, for us, it's important to have have something that you know when we're spending shareholder money that we could you know, you know have some protection in there for them. So we've created an extract that we call AME Dash um, One, which uh, you know is a, a proprietary extract of of the main compound, 
and converting ibotenic acid into muscimolby in that compound that we're looking to work with. So when we talk about what we're working on, uh, it is it is an extract that is uh, highly derived of muscimol and, and working with that specifically. It's not synthetic lab created. No, nope, no, it's pure. So it was very important for us to work with with the with the pure uh, organic mushroom and do a process without using any chemicals. So, you know, this is a natural extract of 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 muscimol uh, that we're able to work with. So then uh, the way that studies work is you can't just start asking human beings to take something that you've extracted. You have to Correct. start where, Brian? Where, where, does, where does it all have to begin? Okay, well, where it all begins, uh, there's a couple of, of actual avenues. Um, one, that the extract, but before it can even be entered into the food chain, for instance, oh, we'd have to do initial studies, initial toxicology studies, which, which have been conducted and are, is one that's ongoing. Um, that's one avenue. The second one is to look at um, doing some um, lab bench work using uh, like a primary method, such as using cells. Um, you wanna have the ability to do some initial studies that you can gather the foundation of the data that you need to, ho to hopefully support your hypothesis. And so in this case, you decided to work with mast cells. Uh, yes, because mast cells are um, another immune cell that is involved in um, allergies uh, and inflammation. Uh, you'll commonly find uh, the reaction for some people if you had a rash or you, you may have come across poison ivy or um, there's many other conditions where this may arise as a result of histamine being released when the mast cells activated. So for those They're of you that... And brain. Sorry. Well, and the gut. Yes, and the gut too, correct. Which is interesting because we know that Amanita, it, when used orally, converts hypertonic acid to muscle malt in the gut and in the brain and in the neurons, in the synapses between the neurons. So it would make sense then that it would be affecting other things that are in those same systems, including mast cells. And then those of you that want to know why I'm so excited about this, think about this. If you've ever had eczema or contact dermatitis as a kid or as an adult, if you've ever had hives and the doctor has no idea what caused it and sometimes they're painful and they last for weeks and, and you never knew, it's just called urticaria and you never knew what happened. Asthma, like I have asthma, continual allergies, depending on the season and the humidity and travel and stuff like that. If you get inflammation in the joints and you don't know why, like all of these things, this is all mast cell stuff. And if you've heard of cytokines, cytokine storms, those are started by the mast cells. So there's something going on here in these systems with Amanita and mast cells. And this is the beginning of understanding these connections. And I'm very excited about what this is gonna mean for the future of all of these things, because this is this is cutting edge science, not just for the Amanita, but for science in general, that's looking at cytokine storms, that's looking at rheumatic conditions, that's looking at inflammation and, and conditions caused by inflammation, that's looking at these connections between asthma and skin conditions. And all of these things have a connection somewhere. And so your study may be about a good antidote for that, in this mushroom and in your AME extract, but it also is going to inform research just globally on these systems. So th this, is, this is a really big deal. Considering what a big deal this is, what do you do next now that you've found a reason to move forward in cells? What would be the next step? Well, um, uh, right now, um what we're going to do is we're going to go a little bit deeper from this initial study and just to get a little bit more information um, to uh, help gather and support the initial hypothesis. Uh, there's still many other um, targets that we can look at that will provide that information for us. Um, most of these targets will be involved in the innate immune system, which we think is the important uh, group in this, all, in this uh, methodology. The what testing. immune system? 
the innate immune system. So this is the system that mast cells will be a, a part of as well. This is a system that's involved in detecting initial uh, microbials or pathogens that you may come across um, in your day-to-day -day, uh, living. So for instance, uh, bacterial infection, et cetera, viruses. Um, moving from there, after we would have more information from that, we can go a little bit one step higher and that would be involved a little bit higher testing in a different, um, different method that may involve the use of other um, for instance, lab animals. And then from there, humans? Uh, yes, uh, that's normally how it would work. Um, again, the lab animal studies help provide the initial information regarding dosage. That'll be safe for consumption for humans. So Jeff, where do we stand right now? Because I know in Canada and in the United States, this is labeled not for human consumption, the mushroom in general. And because your extract comes from the mushroom, it is not safe for human consumption. So clearly you've got to get that out of the way, right? So where yeah. are we on that? So that's that's the primary goal of the company right now is, is the preclinical studies that we're working on. So the, the study that we've been talking about, the first part of this uh, interview is the study with the NRC, which is running in parallel with the preclinical studies that we're doing uh, with our, our C CRO um, KGK Science. So we are, as, as Brian had mentioned, we've completed the first talk study being the 14 day. We're just completing the 90 day talk study and hope to have results from that end of November, early December, um, as soon as we can is what we're pushing for. But you know, you're, you're at the mercy of the researchers. Um, and once we get those are sort of the critical uh, studies, uh, uh, you know, when you look at a preclinical uh, trial, it consists of a number of individual studies that have to happen in a sequence. Some can happen in parallel but uh, typically you have to have those completed. So along with those, there's, there's a host of others, but it's really key to get the dosage, the, the, the toxicology and safe dosage levels, uh, because that uh, then allows us to make that application to the FDA for new dietary ingredient and Health Canada for that natural health product number. So um, that's when we'll be applying with this data to support that this is safe for human consumption. And these are the safe dosage levels and um, go from there. So that's really what, what we're focused on at this first days with the company. Have there been any serious injuries in these studies? No, I'm pleased to report. We get an update every week. And, so this uh, mushroom's you know, our, not deadly? No, so we've, you know, in the dosage range that we're using uh, for, for these studies, everything has come back in a very positive, no red flags. Yes. So do you think that we will have a safer human consumption designation like in the next six to nine months, maybe? I sure hope so. That's the, you know, we haven't seen anything that would suggest otherwise, but, you know, I can't give a forward looking yeah, statement yeah, yeah. like that as a public yeah, company. Yeah. So, um, you know, it is our hope. timeline that you're submitting it. Yeah, it is our hope that when these studies are completed, uh, everything goes as it has to date. And we're in a, in a position to make that application. So what we'd be looking to do is the first, uh, First quarter of 2022 has had those submissions into both FDA and Health Canada, and ideally be uh, selling products in the first half of 2022 in the U.S. and then the you know third or fourth quarter in Canada, depending on you know COVID may cause some delays when it comes to approvals and, and everything. But you know we're going to do everything we can on our end to expedite. That's so exciting! I can't believe this is happening. Uh, then when you do list it or sell it, you can't make any claims, just like I can't when I sell anything that I sell and I can't label it anything that might hint at use. I just have right. to give it just this, you know, weird like name that sort of hints at what's actually in it. And then I can just list what's in it. So when you first sell your product, you're not selling it as a medication. No, no, no it's a health supplement, food supplement. And then what's gonna be on the bottle? Uh, so it will be labeled, you know, it's very strict with both uh, the FDA and Health Canada on what you can put on the labeling. So it'll be based on the legal uh, requirements for, for that. Um, however, we have a uh, press release that Professor David Nutt is going to initiate a sleep study. Um, and that will be the first study involving humans where we will be able to then ideally, it's a, it's a functional, uh, functional study which will allow us to make a claim. So the idea of, of completing this study is that uh, upon success of that, we would then be in a position to say, you know, using AME-1 in this form, 
promotes uh, relaxing and and uh, ease, easing of sleep. Um, you, you know, so that's that's the goal of that. Um, we ha- we've started the process, putting the team together, getting organized, um, and we're just you know we're hopeful. We're waiting on a little more data from our studies before we move to that. Obviously, the the ninety day getting that data. So we've we've initiated, started the process. We put a team together. We've, we're working on identifying where we're going to uh, host that study. It'll likely be in the UK because that's where Professor Nutt's located. Um, but that's that's the first step towards that. Yeah, and, and we're excited for that too because I think uh, it'll be the first uh, human study uh, involving a. If, well, I know it'll be the first human study involving Amy Dash One. So it's a pretty big milestone for us to get to that level. So I thought that this was illegal in the UK. So how are you able to experiment with it? No, so it's uh, we're able to treat it as a as a food supplement uh, through there. So that's that's how we're working with it. I'm gonna have to look into that. See why this mushroom is listed as illegal. The mushroom there in Great Britain, it fell under that sweeping legislation they made on all psychotropic drugs, and they included okay. this in it. So I got to figure out why. I got to look into that. See what's going on with that. And then, so now you've got studies going on on sleep. You've got studies on stress or anxiety. No, so it'll be a sleep study. Uh, Right now, it's just, so what we have focused right now is just the the preclinical, which is really the foundation off which every every other study will be built on. Um, Because we're the first company to do the science on this, um, you know, we had to do the full workup from, you know, as Brian said at the beginning, from doing a talks tox assessment to initiating a path to market gap analysis and working with KGK to build out a plan. So, you know, working with their analysts who used to work at the FDA on what we needed to do through these studies to ensure that when we made that application, the I's are dotted, the T's are crossed. Um, So uh, yeah, once we get the preclinicals done, um, the the sleep study will go into full effect. These uh, studies that Brian's leading with the NRC are running in parallel. Um, And then once, once we get, uh, market, you know, product in the market will then turn our, you know, ideally will turn our attention into doing further studies. And, you know, we, as you know, we, we strongly believe that this, this, uh, you know, muscimol and, and this mushroom have tremendous opportunity to work beyond what we're doing. We're just scratching the surface. So it's our goal to stay focused on it and, uh, and be able to sort of peel more, more uh, layers of the onion, if you will. And so there's so much, it's so exciting. There's so much to do. So then I wanted to ask uh, Brian real quick, if you can speak to what's potentially in this mushroom that could be coming over in some of these topicals and in oils. Um, When we had spoken preliminarily, I was saying it's crazy. There's other stuff going on here besides ibotenic acid and muscimol. And I have a list that um, Ava Machacek has been working on for a very long time on the components in the mushroom. I'm sure you've heard of her and her work. And I was wondering, you had mentioned that there are some substances of interest. Yes, so that's part of the further uh, investigation. So we're looking into the impact of um, the naturally found chitin and also the naturally found beta glucans in these mushrooms. They're both at a very high concentration, theoretically, what we've what I've, we've been looking at. And now we're trying to investigate if they're truly involved in what we're seeing. Thank you guys for all of your information, for the work that you're doing. I know when you're a startup like this, you're the small guy in a really big pond and you can get kicked around but I'm telling you, you are on the cutting edge of really good stuff. And if people don't know it yet, they're going to know it. And they're going to be envious that they didn't see it and get in on the ground. And I know also people like you don't get involved in small startup companies like this unless you believe in it. So I want to thank you guys for being the good guys here and for believing in this mushroom and for allowing me to be a part of it and ask you questions and for talking to the lay community and and caring that there's suffering out here and knowing that this could be a new cutting edge treatment and for believing in it and doing the work and and for your time. Well, thank you. And and likewise, uh, the work that you're doing with Amanita Dreamer and bringing 
knowledge to to the masses through your channels and through your videos and uh, you know and allowing us the opportunity to come on and speak to your community because you know the way we look at it is we're not competitors we're peers really in in trying to bring you know on our side bringing that science forward because we have the ability through the public markets of raising capital and and being able to do the studies and go that route and all the work that you're doing and the community is doing on the on the sort of grassroots side anecdotally working with this mushroom and and uh, i think it all works in parallel to to sort of bring this forward so we're excited and we're happy to be part of it with you and look forward to staying in touch and working with you going forward all right we all keep me in touch on any new uh findings and as things move forward yeah 100 percent. absolutely thanks guys i appreciate it thank you thank you bye cheers bye-bye